Here we are at Shadow Monk. We're getting close to the end at this point. Shadow Monks are surprisingly flexible. You have your strength based build, you have your archery build, and you have your typical dexterity build. And weighing against those options is something that I think is kind of an interesting conversation that I'm excited to get in with you guys. So let's compare the different Shadow Monks. And so Trant Monk did a strength based Shadow Monk and kind of showed that you can do a fairly reasonable strength based Shadow Monk. However, for me, when I think about my Shadow Monk, I'm thinking about a an expert infiltrator, somebody who can get in and get out without ever being seen. And being a dexterity build, leads us more that way. So for me, the strength based monk is out. Next up, we have the archery monk versus the more melee focused monk. If you're going the archery monk, you're going to want to pick up the archery fighting style and you're going to want to focus more on your key fueled attacks or more about damage output. And their main aggression is going to come from the fact that they can do pass without trace to set up ambushes for the team and then get a very big damage turn on that first turn. But for me, when it comes to the shadow monk, we also have to take into consideration that we have darkness and we have silence. Two things that we want to keep people in. Now, how is an archer supposed to keep somebody in darkness or keep somebody in silence? They really cannot. And that's why I prefer the melee based dex monk. That way we can get in their silence, be right by them and use the sentinel feet to keep them trapped with us. Now, while the other two are viable and you can have a lot of fun with them, for me personally, I'm leaning towards that melee based Dex Monk. So let's get into it. All right, so getting us set up. A bunch of different races are an option, but for me, Shatter Kai stands out. It's just such a good race. It's going to increase our mobility. It's going to increase our durability. It's going to give us resistance to the charm condition. Shatter Kai also gives us proficiency in a martial weapon so we can get a D10 instead of the normal D8. Shatter Kai is just insane. As for our stat spread, we're doing the typical dexterity, wisdom, constitution stat spread. Get all of those as high as you possibly can, favoring dexterity the most. A little niche here is that we definitely want to pick up some of our rogue skills from our background. We are going to be infiltrators like crazy and so having a thieves tool proficiency we're gonna get a lot of value out of that so let's grab it here. Right off the bat we're gonna need one level in fighter. This level is a very important level for a couple different reasons. We have concentration spells unlike most monks so that constitution saving throw proficiency is gonna be a big deal for us. Not only that we cannot see through our own darkness. The fighter has the blind fighting style and allows us to see within 10 feet of our own darkness so now we can use it aggressively. Now, after that first level of fighter, we are going to be a shadow monk for the rest of our lifespan. There's not much to talk about until we hit monk three. Monk three is when we get our shadow arts. Now, I want to be really flexible with my shadow arts. If we have potential to set up an ambush, pass without trace is the spell for us. And we can get a ton of value out of it. Pass without trace used in the right moment is essentially action surge for your whole team. Now, darkness. Darkness is really dependent on how your team is set up, how your team works with you. And it's not going to be something I want to build my whole build around, but I do want the option of having it available to us. There are going to be moments when we can can trap a mage, isolate them, and cast that darkness and set up a really powerful moment where they can't escape it. So now they can't target people with spells. They're really boned. And we are able to create that situation. And it's nice to have in our back pocket. Silence is similar. Silence is powerful in that we can use it with our team. We don't have to have a bunch of team synergies to set up a strong silence to ruin a mage's day. As for our dark vision, I suppose we can use it if we have a teammate who is really reliant on our dark vision. But our key points are valuable, man. We really don't want to be spending them on giving somebody dark vision. They really should be figuring out that problem themselves. But it's in our back pocket for when we need it. Now I've mentioned this before, but one of the powerful things you can do with darkness is you can get yourself a tongue piercing and cast your darkness directly on your tongue piercing. That way you can close your mouth, all the darkness disappears, which is pretty important when we can only see 10 feet into the darkness and then we can open our mouths and all of a sudden the darkness is back. So that's a very useful way of using the darkness and some DMs are gonna say, well, that's your item interaction and that's fair. I would probably do the same thing for balance reasons. However, DMs will often let you talk on your turn and assuming you can talk on your turn, you can open your mouth as a free action. And if your DM lets you do that, darkness becomes an absolutely terrifying spell. So if your DM is really nice, you will become a very deadly person very quickly. As soon as we hit monk four, we're definitely picking up the sentinel feet. I talk a lot about how one of the mistakes people make with monks is they take too many feet. However, in this particular circumstance, it's just too core to our play style for me to let go of. Now that we hit monk five, I'm primarily gonna be using stunning strike as our assassination option. If you're a rogue and you jump out of the shadows and stab someone, you're doing a ton of damage. If we're a monk jumping out of the shadows and stabbing someone, we're basically tickling them. We're not good assassins unless we can isolate one person and we can stun lock them turn after turn after turn and kill them that way. That's our best chance at assassinating someone. We're actually not the best assassins despite all the shadowy nature and, uh, and running through the shadows and jumping out of the shadows, all that stuff. We're actually not good at killing people. So this is our best bet. How it's gonna work is you're gonna commit. Use however many key points you need to get that stun off. And if you don't, begin your re retreat. If you use up all your key points and they're not dead yet, retreat, get the hell out of there. But if you're lucky, you'll stun lock them until they're dead and you completed your assassination mission. Our next two shadow monk features are super reliant on there being shadows. So it's gonna help us infiltrate in certain circumstances, but if there's bright light, they're completely useless. So the range of power on these next two features all are based on our DM and the world that they've created. But here's a pro tip for you. 
You have Pass Without Trace, meaning you can bring allies with you. Convince one of your allies to take the Control Flames cantrip and bring them on your infiltration mission. That will allow them to turn off all the lights as you go silently and out of range of those lights. So they will completely enable you to do all the teleports that you want to do, shift around, go invisible in the darkness. Another pro tip is bring a mirror. If you put a mirror underneath the door, that means you can see on the other side of the door. And if there's shadows on the other side of the door and there's shadows on your side of the door, you can now bypass that door completely with a bonus action. The Shatter Kai teleport mixed with your shadow teleports means you have a ton of mobility, even sometimes outside of darkness. But I would really use the Shatter Kai's teleports to get us in position for our own teleports. When we can, we want to use our own teleport. When we cannot, we can use the Shatter Kai's. The thing to note about these two features is they are built not to fight. If you can do a whole infiltration mission, if your goal is to go steal from a safe, you don't want to get into a fight. And this is where Shadow Monk shines the most. You are completely capable of bypassing an, an entire your army without ever being seen, going in there, getting what you need, and getting the hell out. If you have situations like that in your campaign, that is where Shadow Monk shines brighter than nearly anyone else. It is their bread and butter. Combat is not our bread and butter. Infiltration missions with objectives are. As for our subclass capstone, we've had Sentinel since the beginning of the campaign, basically. So it's going to do absolutely nothing for us. It's a really disappointing subclass capstone. As for our ASIs throughout all of these levels, we're definitely wanting to get as much dexterity as possible, followed by wisdom, followed by constitution. We really don't have time for any more feats past Sentinel. So what are we? First off, we're infiltration and ambush specialists. That's what we do. Past that, we are a control striker. Now, I want to repeat that. First off, we are infiltrators and ambush specialists. That's what we want to do. And anytime we have the opportunity to do that, we're going to do that. When it fails, then we are control strikers, not before. The, the Shadow Monk offers a lot of flexibility in how we approach a situation. We can turn off the lights and then teleport, or we can go in there and try and stab people. Clearly, I think one of those is better than the other, but we have the options. That's what's cool about the Shadow Monk is it lets you approach situations creatively and potentially poorly and potentially with amazing prowess. And I think that's a lot of fun to play with and it's going to reward good play and i think for that reason shadow monk stand out to me is one of the most fun monks you can play but that's just my take i would love to hear your guys's how would you build your shadow monk let me know in the comments down below we have recently opened up our patreon we have two amazing patrons right now and we'd love to have more go and check it out and you'll find some cool benefits while you're at it but other than that hope you have yourselves a kick-ass day and i'll see you on the next one see you love you bye